square root is not a, uh, this would be a regular parabola. This is the one that's a sideways parabola. If you put them both in your calculator, what was going to happen is you were going to see this because that kept going. Okay, so what? So then you should be able to just kind of pick that one up. Um, on the back side. Again, we just went through, those of you that I helped with this one, we just went through and we put in choices. The top one was kind of silly to put in because it was the same for all four choices. So it's basically just the bottom equation that matters. Um, they were online. And so what we had to figure out was which one was the most correct graph line. The 2x minus 7, if you put that in your calculator, was the line was way down here. Obviously not that. That was just a process of elimination. This one was way down here. Obviously not that. Again, just a process of elimination on that one. Um, I know you didn't like the fractions too much, but is what it is. Number four, partially my fault. First of all, absolute value graphs of V. I had a whole bunch of people who had two lines. That's what it looks like when the answer is uh, just a plain number. But if there is an X in it somehow, it's going to be a changeable thing. It's going to be slanty. It's going to be parabola. It's going to be an absolute value. It's going to do something. It's not just going to remain the same. Um, notice that Oliver has circles on the ends of both, closed in circles, as he should. That's okay. Because that is where his open circle was. That's the thing that was going to interfere with it being a function, and it is an open circle. The one thing I have to say, and it's my pretty much my fault because I did it with all of you. You see how this says starts at negative three? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't put an arrow. Just literally start at negative three if that's what it tells you to. Okay, it's the only thing that I changed on several of yours. Let's just make sure that's a filled in arrow, not. I'm sorry, filled in circle, not in arrow. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Those don't show up too often. They're, yeah, they don't show up very often. Um, the yellow packet, I did go through and grade a little bit more of it. Um, just said it, put it away some, oh, do I want you to put it away or do no, I want to hold it? No, I'll probably want to hold it. Um, you want to take it. No, you can use it. I think we can take it. All right, put them on top of the divider real quick. I'll come get them again. I don't know why I said that. I didn't do too well on that. Do it. This one's got the back paid off. This one's got the front paid off. I don't know what you meant. Also, I don't know what you meant. Remember when my mom do you remember? Yes, I remember. I remember. Why do you have to bring that up? That's so weird. What, did I embarrass you? It's weird, that's what it is. It's weird. No, my mom said that she was a thing. Your mom? <laughs> Just stop. Have a good one. We need not to talk today. Now, so we took a little break. We were in the statistics unit when we were talking about histograms, maps and whisker plots, all of those things. Then we took a teeny break on Thursday and Friday, and we went to that whole world of piecewise functions. Now we are back into the world of statistics again. And what we have to talk about today is called a two-way frequency table. And I'm going to be honest with you, at first, many years ago, that first one I did this many years ago, didn't make a lot of sense to me. The other day I sat down and I got it immediately. So we are completely capable of doing it, but 
if we think about it too hard, I'm afraid it's going to confuse us a little bit. So don't think too hard. Well, here's the good news. You did one of these on the practice pages the other day. You did fine on yeah. Something just Well, it's a little Yeah. Okay, did I get everybody? All right, very good. So far, we have worked with quantitative data from three single variables. For example, the weight of baby chicks or the number of video enabled devices. But we can also work with categorical data or data that shows how many things surveyed fall into a given category. Let's do a quick categorical survey in this class. By a show of hands, how many students fall into each of the following categories? Okay, how many of you have brown men? Hands up so I can count. I don't count to a One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of you? Okay, seven of you have brown eyes. How many blue eyes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is the weirdest thing ever because I'm just going to tell you this. Do you realize that all of my brown eyed kids were like right here in the middle? All of my blue eyed kids, with the exception of one, are over here. Weird. Okay, I really didn't because I couldn't tell you what color any of you have. Um, green eyes. Okay. Uh, Weird. Okay, other. Ms. Rowe, what color am I? You already raised your hand no. for blue. I'm red. I need a, I don't have blue eyes, Ms. Rowe. No, it depends on the light. My daughter's depends on the light and what she's wearing. Yeah. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're blue. Sometimes it was red. I know. Ms. Rowe, in the summertime, I get green. Yeah, yours are green too. They're like brown but green. Yeah. 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, the good news is we got everybody. We didn't leave anybody out. Way to go, everybody. Wait, uh, where's Pop Hazel. So I put me in other. I don't know why it says Hazel, but I can put you in other. Which one did I put you in? Yeah. Now you gotta go mess things up, though. <laughs> nah, it really doesn't matter. Okay, although surveys of data that contain only one category are interesting. Statisticians are often interested in how responses to two categories relate to one another. For example, we may want to know how a person's gender, that's one category, affects what profession, a second category, they would prefer when they grow up. We may want to know if a person's hair color, one category, has any relationship to their eye color, second category. This type of data summarizes in a two-way frequency table. Okay, so class of 20 students recorded their hair color and eye color, which are shown in the two-way frequency table below. How many students had blonde hair and blue eyes? Four. They saw blonde ones. Why? Are they still blonde? Um, sometimes there is something. Yeah, it looks weird. Okay, so look at your chart. How many students have blonde hair and blue eyes? Four. 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 Right there, correct? Yeah. Blonde hair, blue eyes, four. How many students have red hair? Eight. eight. Where are you four. getting eight? Four. Oh, wait, no, there's four. I counted the four. Hair color? Red? Total. Yeah, I counted the total. Right? Four. four. Okay. Construct a table that shows the joint relative frequencies. Okay, this is this is a little weird. I have never seen them ask this. But it's also not hard. What? Do you know what it is? Do I know what it is? Yeah. You basically rewrite the table, but remember I said we're in a statistical unit? Yeah. So you make it basically a proportion. Or not a proportion. You make it a fraction, is what you do. I think. All right, so how many kids have black hair and blue eyes? Three. 
How do you have black hair and blue how, eyes? How many people total? How many kids total are in 20. that class? 20. 20. So this fractional amount is 3 out of 20. Okay, you got your calculators? No. All right, well then, we'll do this the quick way. Okay, then just do 3 divided by 20 for me. How do you have black hair and blue eyes? I don't know. It's because blue eyes goes with blonde hair. That's like usually, but not always. What do we got? Okay. So, point 15 is my. Hey, hey. Point 15 is my joint relative frequency. Yes, I'll. It is 15%. No, it'd be 15% of the kids. Matthew. 15% of the kids had black hair and blue eyes. Okay. What about brown hair and. No. Black hair and brown eyes. Five. That's five. So five out of 20. No, 20 out of five is four. Five out of 20 is one four. So point 0.25. Yeah. How many kids have black hair and green eyes? One. So one out of 20 is? Point zero five. If you have point five, remember that's half. Okay, so be careful about that. Now, how do I get this number? I add up these. What's point fifteen, point twenty five, and point five? Well, that's what? What? Yeah. 25 cents and 15 cents is how much? 40 cents plus 5 cents is 45 cents. Good Lord, you guys. So that tells me that 45% of the kids had black hair. Yes? Okay. Now let's go on to blonde. How many kids had blonde hair and blue eyes? Four, which would be 4 out of 20, which is 20%. Or point twenty, Matthew. Right. Stop tapping. I think we should. Do you think that you can? I think you should be quiet. Finish the rest Ooh, of the table. Yes, I can. I can you finish? I don't have a calculator. You don't need one. Just take the top to number, multiply by five. Yeah. Not every single one. Yeah, because they're all out of twenty. So it's not the teacher. So two out of twenty is ten percent. You got it. Oh, don't we have to simplify the fractions? Yeah, that's a pretty easy, Miss Rob. My mom is. I have something around 15, 20, 25, 35. Because that's not right. Top one should be 40. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What should that be down in that bottom corner? One. one. Yep. That's not one of the That's the total. So both this and this should add up to one. Then you did something wrong, <laughs> which is how I knew I had done something wrong because it didn't add up to one. So far, so good? Yeah. Hmm? It's just a, it's just a probability. It's basically that's the keyword I wanted, not the portion probability. All right, let's keep going. We would like to understand association or trend within the data set. In other words, 
we would like a response to one category. Tell us something about the response to the other category. Or would a response, not we would like, but that's what we're testing for. Does one thing have any kind of impact on the other thing? So example three says, let's see if there's a connection between eye color and hair color using conditional relative frequencies. So what does conditional mean? If there's a conditional, it's something. Half of having a It means that it depends on something. One condition is going to have to be given. We're going to say, for instance, if I remember, this one's about red hair. So they're going to be talking to you about red hair. So they're going to ask you different questions based on people having red hair. So what is the conditional relative frequency of having green eyes if you have red hair? Okay, so how many people have red hair? Four. Four. That's going to be the bottom number because there are only four kids who have red hair. Okay. Now, if you have red hair, how many of those have green eyes? Three. Three. So, what is the conditional relative frequency? 75%. That's 75%. That's pretty strong, I would say, don't you think? That's pretty strong. Small now it is it is based on yes you're right it's based on one classroom first of all the fact that they had three people with red hair in one classroom is pretty impressive yeah, one yeah. Was red, and one with red hair and blue eyes like most rare yeah so yes we would want a bigger sample in order to do a generalization but for that particular class that's a pretty good indication of what's going on there what is the conditional relative frequency of having green eyes if you have black hair well, how many black hairs? Nine. Nine. And the green? One. What's that? Uh, I believe it's 0. 0.11. But somebody double check me. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's. I believe it's. I'm not sure. It is. Here's a, here's a little trick, you guys, about nines. If it's one divided by nine, it's 0. 0.11111111. If it's two divided by nine, it's 0. 0.22222222. If it's three divided by nine, it's point three 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 two. You said two. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Why? <laughs> That's how nines work. Good one. So this is point one one. Okay. Does it appear that having green eyes has a dependency or at least an association with having red hair? Yeah, it would look like it. Why? Because it has a much higher conditional relative frequency. So yeah. Yes, higher relative frequency. Now, notice that it says, does it appear, not does it. We're not making a sweeping generalization. We're talking about inside of that classroom. It does appear that there is a relationship there. Is it more likely that a person with black hair has blue eyes or that a person with blonde hair has brown eyes? Use conditional marginal frequencies to support your answer. Okay, so black hair, how many? Nine kids with black hair, how many of them have blue eyes? Three out of nine for black and blue. Okay, so that's 33. The other one is blonde, how many? With brown eyes. Two out of seven. Somebody's going to have to do that one for me. I don't know that one off the top of my head. Point four. Point fourteen. Yeah, I know you made that up. Point two eight five. Thank you. Oh, so, so I'm going to make it. If it's 0. 0.285, I'm going to make it point two nine. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I just rounded it. Okay. So which is more likely? That makes no sense. Black hair, blue eyes. Now, that's not realistic. Are we saying that? Is it a lot different? No, it's not a lot different. So I wouldn't really say that one was more likely than the other. Those are pretty close relative frequencies. But given the fact that I have to pick one, yes, I would say black hair. Blue eyes, which as Matthew points out, and we can't get over the fact that it's a little bit unusual. Yes, 
I'm not Raise your hand if you have black hair and blue eyes. I bet no one will read I should watch it. I bet, Miss Rowe, I bet no one in this classroom has black hair and blue eyes. We know that. Okay. <laughs> a survey of 52 graduating seniors was conducted to determine if there's a connection between the gender of the student and whether they were going on to college. Based on this data, what is more likely? That someone going to college is female or that someone who is female is going to college. Now they sound like they're the same thing, don't they? But they're not. They're not the same. Okay, so based on the data, what is more likely? Someone going to college is female. Okay, so this is college plus female. Okay, so how many kids are going to college? 22. Nope, how many kids are going to college? 29. 29. Going to college, 29. Okay, of those, how many are female? 13. 13. All right, my calculator kiddos. The work. Give me a number. 0.448. Did you really check? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. 0.448, so 0.45? Yeah. This is not four. Okay, now, someone who is female is going to college. Okay, how many females you got? We just did that one. 22. No, we didn't. Female is 22. And how many of those females are going to college? 13. Didn't we just do this? No. Remember, this one was the total kids who were going to college. That was 29. 29 kids are going to college. Of that, 13 were female. Okay, mm -hmm. this time I said to you, of all the females, that's a total of 22. How many of them are going to college? That's the same 13. What's this number? 0.60. But did you have to round up? Yeah. Oh, 0.59. Seth, why are you lying? We rounded up for four five. Because they was, <laughs> Seth, that was like this. That's why. So the five bumped that up. What's after the nine? Zero. So zero doesn't bump up the nine. That's why. All right. They may seem like the same thing, but they are quite different. So based on the data, what's more likely? Yeah. Someone who is female is going to college. I don't what? Yep. That's it. We got like 15 minutes. Yes. Go. Homework. Go. Homework. Go. No, I don't want you working with partners today. I want you working by yourself. IA. Go. Work. No, you're working. And if it doesn't stop, then he's going right back over there. <laughs>